Hello and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're gonna get the panels that we glued up in the previous episode, thickness and cut to size. Let's get going. So in the previous episode, when I was joining these together, they were at a 16 millimeters thickness. And since then, I've taken them out the clamps and I've machined them down to 15 millimeters on the thicknesser. I didn't do this by hand because this is something that we covered in the previous project where we made the lid for the box. So I didn't want to dwell on thicknessing again. Instead, I wanted to develop our skills when it comes to sizing large panels by hand. So if you want to know how to thickness material by hand, you can go and watch the box project or previously in my online school, I've done a whole section on preparing material by hand. Go and have a look at that and it will get you to this stage. So upon machining this up this morning, I obviously got rid of my idiot's triangle that we drew in the previous episode. But what I did was I put a little line on the side or a little arrow that showed that this was the face that had my original idiot's triangle on and was the one that I decided to be face out. Now, realistically, this doesn't matter too much because I can just re-decide which face looks best, but then I've remembered that this one had that kind of patch there which we wanted to hide. So this will definitely be our outside face. So let's keep that face up. And same again for this one. Little arrow on the side here, which is indicating that this is the face up. Uh, let's just double check that. See, we've got more light staining on the back of this and I don't really like that. So that's definitely the outside face. So now I'm gonna stand these up and work out which face I want to be or which edge I want to be the front of the cabinet. And then that can become our face edge and then the side that we've decided we want facing outwards can be our face side. So I know that that white patch was gonna go in the drawer. So I can either choose if this is the right outside face and this is the front or if it goes round that way and because i'm going to be taking these down to the right width i can also choose which part of the board i want to cut off as well so i mean there's a small bit of i don't know darker grain here so looking at this there's not a lot of difference in the two sides i might as well get rid of that which means this is going to be the right hand side of the cabinet so we're going to do a big old face side on that massive to make it really nice and clear. Quite often I see people draw these markings really small and then when it comes to the crucial stage of gluing up they're like looking around for this tiny little marking that they've done on there that's probably smudged off. Make it nice and clear and then on the edge here I mean we're going to plane it off anyway but there's our face edge. As for this one let's see so we've got some staining on the inside here I reckon that by the time we cut off the shelf and then reassemble it so it goes in here I reckon we'll just I mean, it might expose a little bit of it, but we've got to work with what we've got so far. But we'll make it the back of the cabinet, which means this is going to be the left-hand side of the cabinet. Big face side there, and then face edge like that. And these markings are really, really important because all of the remaining sizing we need to do of this panel when it comes to squaring off both the ends to length and also taking it down to the correct width this way are going to be referenced off the face side and the face edge. So it's really, really important that we have those marks clearly. So the first job is to create a perfectly square face edge to the face side because we've still got a rough saw and edge on here that we need to clean up. And when doing this, we have to be absolutely certain that this is perfectly square and perfectly straight. We're not doing a spring joint on this now because there's nothing joining it. It needs to be dead flat. So I'm going to hog off the majority of these saw marks with the jack plane. And I'm actually going to move across to the joint plane. Just, I like using it for stuff like this. I get so much more control from it. So you might be able to see a little bit of light creeping out under here and under here, which means we've got a little bump in the middle still. So we'll get rid of that. Check it for square again. and then check for a bump in the middle. I can still see there's a tiny, tiny little bit. So you can see that when I'm doing this, I'm starting the shaving about here and ending it there. After doing that two or three times, I then do one full pass along the entire length of the board, recheck it, still nice and square, and then check for flatness. There you go. And I can feel that like it's the plane is rubbing on both corners and it isn't pivoting in the middle. So that's fine. So 
So the next job is to square off one of these edges to the face side that you can see on the front. So I'm going to probably do this side here. I'm going to go right up against the shortest board that I've stuck to here and square a line across and then cut off this material, leaving about a millimetre to spare. I'm going to use the bandsaw to do this, but obviously you could use a handsaw as well. And then we'll get the old shooting board out and square that off by hand. So when you do this, at all times, make sure that your face edge is in contact with the fence. So when we're doing this end, we'll do it like that. And when we're doing this end, you're not going to flip it around like this because it means that the face edge is away from the fence. Instead, what you need to do is flip it over end to end and work on it like that. The reason we're being so vigilant about this is because if you imagine this is a plan view of the board we're working on, as you can see, there's a taper on it. Now this is very exaggerated, but it's highly likely that the boards we're working on, because we've been edge jointing them and because they're roughly cut on the bandsaw and all that, there is likely to be a very small taper and it might only be a millimetre difference end to end, but that can make a big difference in the finished result. So we'll draw our face side on here and then you can see that it's gone off here. So that would mean that this side of the board is our face edge. So this is how you would see it if it was on the shooting board. So we've got the fence, the plane will plane this end to make a nice 90 degree edge on this corner. And then what we'll be doing is flipping it round end to end and then it will create a nice 90 degree on this corner. And then as you can see, we've got three faces that have been dimensioned correctly. Problems arise with this when you start referencing off this tapered edge, because if we flip this over incorrectly and then we reference it off here, you can see that the plane is going to cut 90 degrees to the fence. Let's just cut that off. And now we've got an edge that's 90 degrees to the face on two edges, that is. You can see this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, but quite obviously it's not parallel to one another. Whereas if you constantly reference off one face edge, you'll get a 90 degree there, you get a nice 90 degrees here, and then later on we'll be referencing on that edge with a marking gauge in order to scribe a line that is parallel to it and cut off what's left of this taper, just like that. And this rule applies to things like sizing small panels like this, right up to sizing entire 8x4 sheets on panel saws. You always need to make sure that you're referencing off one edge just in case there's any errors in the setup that will add up the more cuts you do. If you're constantly referencing off one edge, then those errors should be cancelled out. Okay, and so with that edge squared off, we're then going to mark the height of the sides. So I'll put a little mark where I want it to be and then square that across. Remember, referencing from that face edge. Same again on the larger panel. This cut line will also be squared off on the shelf side of the component as well, but we won't do that just yet. We'll leave the edge on the shelf rough for now. So we've got the face edge there. So we'll just put this shelf component aside for now. I will just transfer the face side and the face edge mark to it so that I know next time I pick it up. That's the orientation it should be in. And also for this side, I'm probably, yeah, I'll just recenter the face side and face edge. It doesn't matter if there's two markings on there as long as it lines up and then get to work squaring them up again. Remember that face edge. And then every now and then I'm putting them together with the face sides in the correct orientation. So you can see they're both on the bottom here. Putting them both together, getting those two bottom corners aligned and then feeling if they're the same size or not. Feels like this top one's still got a way to go. Okay, so after that, one face edge and two sides that are square to that face edge. The only edge we've got remaining now is this one where we need to take the cabinet down to width. Now it turns out I've left quite a lot of excess on here. The board is actually going to be cut off sort of around there. So all of this will become waste, but I'm actually gonna turn that into some of the stretches that become the top of the cabinet. So it's not wasted material. And again, it gives me extra scope to cut out material that I don't want. In the case of this, it's okay. But when it comes to cutting out the shelf, I'm actually gonna be able to cut out that entire curly section on the end there which I don't really like the look of. Now if you have a table saw or a rip fence I would advise just doing it on there and get the job done quickly uh, but I'm going to show you the hand tool method for those of you who don't have such luxuries. For this you're going to be needing a panel gauge. A panel gauge is essentially 
a larger version of a marking gauge. Because what we want to do with this gauge is run it off the face edge and scribe a parallel line that's parallel to that edge. However, most marking gauges will not reach the line that I've marked on here. So we're gonna create a very rudimentary panel gauge. Got two battens here. These are slightly thinner than 15 millimeters so that they're not gonna be sitting proud of the panel when I'm running it up against the edge, but it's not too essential to be honest. Uh, we're gonna glue one of them to the top. I'm just gonna use super glue for this. Pop that on there and then we'll make sure it dries nice and square. Hold that for a few seconds. And we'll just drive a couple of screws into it. And then on here, we will mark from the fence the desired width or the desired depth of the cabinet. So a little mark there. And then what we're gonna be doing is driving a pin into that area to create our marking gauge. So I'm gonna pilot that with a tiny drill bit first. And then carefully tap it through from the reverse side just until it starts poking out. There it is. And that right, th ow, <laughs> that right there is a panel gauge. So then with this, referencing the fence of the panel gauge against our face edge, we're then gonna pull it on like that and carefully scribe it backwards. And do this in a series of short passes and ensure that you don't track the grain when doing so. In fact, it's sometimes easier if you start at the bottom like this and then work your way up the board doing longer and longer strokes. Now it's not the best line in the world, but it will certainly do the job. I can at least see where it is. You could of course try and file a point on the end of the nail if you wanted, but I'm not gonna bother. This will be absolutely fine. And I'm actually gonna do this on both faces of the board as well. And I'll actually clamp it down this time because that will make it much easier. But having this line on two faces will just make it easier when I'm planing. Let's check them on the face edge still, yep. Oh, that is much easier. And then once again, I'm gonna rough cut these on the bandsaw about a millimeter to a half a millimeter away from that gauge line. Obviously, you can do this by hand as well. I'm not going to though. We all know how to use a hand saw, don't we? If you don't, have a look at my video on how to saw correctly. Link is in the supporting resources below. So now the only thing we've got left to do is plane down to that line. Now there's a few different ways that you can plane down to this line. The simplest way is to just get it upright in the vise and then plane it until you hit the line on both edges and just double check it square in doing so. That's a good method but there is potential for wobble and if you're sick of trying to balance your plane on a narrow edge there is another way of doing it. And it's done so by constructing a long grain shooting board. This is nothing more than a sacrificial flat piece of material and a sacrificial fence. Doesn't need to be anything pretty at all. And then what we can do is put the panel on it like that, the fence will support it from behind and we simply use a plane on its side and plane down to that gauge line. But the nice thing about this, you don't even have to faff around making the edge perfectly square because the plane isn't necessarily referencing off this edge of the shooting board. You can overhang the material quite a lot. This is just a really good method of seeing what you're doing while planing rather than have it sort of hidden underneath the plane while you're working on top of it. And as you approach the line, you'll start seeing little whiskers of material like this breaking off. And that's an indication that you're very, very close to the line. You've only got to do one or two more passes and you're done. And there you go. That is how you size the side panels of the cabinet. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you watch this lesson on my free online woodworking school, there's a ton of supporting resources listed below. You'll find a link to that page in the description below. But for now, you're ready to move on to the next lesson, which you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left-hand side of this video. I will see you in the next one.